Hey guys, it's Chris at Highland Guitars. You're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of this video, I'll have earned the honor and privilege of your subscription. Got a question for you. Is it possible to plan for or predict the tone of a solid body electric guitar before that guitar has even been made? Now the short answer would be yes. Of course you can. It's what a lot of luthiers do when they set about building a guitar, is they will select certain parts and materials that they know are likely going to impart a certain kind of tone. Now, if you're building the guitar for yourself, you can get fairly accurate if you have experience. If you're building guitars for other people, you also have to factor in the equipment they're playing through as well as their playing style. And we don't always know that, and we don't always know how they intend to use that guitar. Perhaps they're looking for a guitar that's gonna have a specific kind of tone that they want for a specific song. So they would only play that guitar for the one song. So uh, you have to keep that in mind. But understanding how we predict or plan for the tone can help us to build the instrument uh, properly so that it will yield the tone that we're after. But what it also does is it gives us the ability to know what needs to be done should the guitar not exactly produce the right tone that we're after. We'll, we'll have a, a strategy that we can follow to alter the guitar so that it will produce the kind of tone that we want. Now, a lot of this is actually somewhat moot in the modern era because we do have access, or many people have access, to um, software which can manipulate the tone of the guitar. So uh, we're talking about uh, modeling software, and a lot of amps come equipped with it. You can purchase software for uh, computers and laptops and tablet type uh, uh, equipment that you could plug your guitar into in order to get those tones. But if you're more of a purist or you're trying to respond to a customer's wishes by building a guitar that's going to produce a certain kind of tone, you have to know how to select the parts and the materials in order to get you into that uh, ballpark where they're going to have the, the right tone to begin with. A lot of folks don't like the idea of modeling the tone that they want through the amplifier and through software. So you want to try to build the guitar so that it will produce that kind of tone. So how do we do this? Well, for one thing, I would love to hear from you all. Uh, if you've got a a, te a technique or a system that you follow in order to build a guitar so that it's going to yield a specific kind of tone and you've been successful, share that down in the comments section below. Uh, I would love to hear what your methods and techniques are, and I'm sure everybody else watching would, would appreciate that as well. The way I do it is, I think it's probably a way that other luthiers will do it as well, but typically I divide a guitar into two categories. You have the parts category and the materials category. The part category is the pickups, the electronic controls, the fret wire, the nut, um, the tuners, and any of the hardware that you attach to the guitar once you're in that final assembly stage. The material component or category is what you make the body, the neck, and the fretboard out of, which of course is wood. Now the nut can also uh, factor that into that as well because when I said that a, a nut is, uh, I consider it a part, that would be if I was using like a roller nut or a Floyd Rose nut. But if you're making more of a traditional guitar, you're gonna be making the nut out of a material such as bone or antler or corian or whatever. So really the nut is probably one of the only uh, components on the guitar which can be listed as either a part or a material. Now when it comes to the materials, 
I know that the, and you know, this is going to be one of those comments that's somewhat controversial because we've been talking about this for so long. I do know for a fact that wood will affect the tone. So in theory, you can pick a certain species of wood like mahogany or maple, and it's supposedly going to impart a specific tone on the guitar that you're building. However, it is very minimal, first of all. Second of all, it can't be controlled. You can pick from five different slabs of mahogany and build guitar bodies from them, and they could all sound different. So it's the, the tone of the wood isn't species dependent, it's board dependent. So you have to consider that even though you think a slab of mahogany is going to yield a warm, rich tone, it may in fact sound really bright. And I've had that happen to me many times. As a result, I don't really consider wood to be as significant a factor in planning and predicting the tone of the, of the finished guitar. Instead, I choose the wood because I like the way it looks, I like the way it works, and I also have to select wood because it has a certain feature set that is necessary for what I'm using it for. A good example of that is a fretboard. A fretboard has to be made out of very hard, dense wood because it has to hold the frets in place. So we typically will use rosewoods, ebony's, the hard maples, that sort of wood. And I like to use woods for the body that are light in weight, but still durable enough to resist dings and scratches, but at the same time is easy to work. So I do a lot of research to select woods that I'm going to be able to incorporate into the body, the neck, and the fretboard that are going to serve those purposes well. I don't worry so much about how they're going to impact tone because it doesn't matter. I can't change it and I can't predict it just by looking or even tapping a board. You just don't know what it's going to sound like until after the guitar has been completely made. At that point, there's nothing you can do to change it anyways with respect to the wood. Now as far as the parts are concerned, I will select certain parts because of how they impart tone. And probably the most significant part, as you know, is the pickup. If you select humbucker pickups for your guitar, you're going to get that warm, rich tone where some of the treble frequencies might be clipped a little bit. But that's not always a guarantee. It all depends on how the pickup was made, the kind of wire that was used in the coils, the type of magnet it uses, uh, how much wire is wrapped around the bobbin. All those factors will affect how that pickup is going to sound. But once you have experience and understand how these different elements of the pickup affect the tone, you can read the specs for a pickup and get a pretty good idea of how that pickup is going to affect the tone of the guitar you're going to build. So if you're looking for a certain kind of tone, you got that in the back of your mind, you can shop through pickups based on the specifications of the pickups and hopefully who you're shopping with is providing all the information that you would need. The number of winds, the type of wire, the type of insulation on the wire, um, the kind of magnet that's used, all those sort of things. Those are going to help you to determine what kind of tone that that pickup is going to impart. So you can select the pickup and feel relatively confident that pickup is going to help you achieve the tone you want. And of course, different types of pickups produce different kinds of tone. We know that the humbucker is going to produce a warmer, darker tone, whereas the single coil strat style pickup is going to produce a brighter, uh, twangier tone. So once you have an understanding of how the pickup affects the tone, you can then start to shop for the pickups to get the right pickup for the tone you're after. And you can do this long before you ever build the guitar. And the other uh, components that have an effect on tone, of course, are the electronic controls that control the signal coming out of the pickup. I'm talking about the potentiometer and most importantly, the capacitor that is soldered to the tone potentiometer. Uh, this is a, uh, an issue that a lot of guitar builders struggle with because they, 
often have experience with guitars where you turn the, the tone knob and nothing seems to happen. It doesn't seem to change the tone. And that's typically because the wrong capacitor was used. But let's back up a little bit and talk about the potentiometer itself. You can purchase potentiometers in a variety of different values. Um, the most common are 250K and 500K values. And that will deter uh, determine how they affect the signal. And um, typically you find 250K pots in Stratocaster pickups because the Stratocaster pickup with the single coil pickups in them, they tend to sound really, really bright. But by adding a 250K pot, that sort of warms it up a little bit. And with a humbucker pickup, you typically find 500K pots because the 500K pot adds a little bit of brightness to the signal. It allows some of those treble frequencies to get through so that the pickup doesn't sound too dark and muddy. However, those aren't the only values that are out there. There are a lot of other pickup values that you can get. So you can select different values, experiment with it to see how it affects the tone. But over time, you start to develop an understanding that one value is going to have one type of sound and another value is going to have another type of sound. So you can use that to help plan and predict the tone of your guitar. Then there's also the fact that pots can be either logarithmic or linear. Now, in truth, logarithmic and linear, that only affects how the signal is attenuated. So it really doesn't affect the tone. It just, it affects how the volume or the tone is altered. So when you turn the volume knob up, you can get a very gradual increase in volume or you can get a sudden increase in volume. That's the difference between linear and logarithmic. And the same is true with tone. As you turn the tone knob, you might not hear anything and then all of a sudden it changes. Or you might have a very gradual change in the tone. So it's really a, 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 a matter of personal preference as to whether you would go with linear or logarithmic depending on how you like to hear the volume increase or decrease or the tone change. So they, that doesn't really affect the tone itself. The capacitor, however, that is soldered to the tone pot does. And like the tone pot, the capacitor has a wide variety of different values that will affect the way in which the capacitor bleeds off trouble as you turn the knob. So um, depending on the value is going to depend, is going to determine the way the tone will sound as you turn the knob. And that's why sometimes when guys have guitars that it doesn't sound like the tone knob is doing anything, a simple change in the capacitor value can alter that. But what you have to do is you'll have to research which capacitor values uh, you think will be most effective at achieving the tone that you want. And once you have some experience, you'll understand just by simply reading the value of the capacitor, what effect that's gonna have on your tone. So that helps you to plan and predict the tone. Now, as far as other electrical components, such as the switch and the jack, uh, some folks are gonna argue with me on this one, but their impact on tone is probably so minimal, you can't hear it with the human ear. You would have to use software that, and, and sound analyzing equipment in order to determine that there might be a difference. So it's not even really worth mentioning. The uh, selection of the, um, the, the pickup selector switch and the jack is just dependent upon what you're trying to do as far as switching between pickups and getting the sound out to your amplifier. So I wouldn't even worry about those for tone. Now as far as fret wire and tuners, um, fret wire I think definitely does have an effect on tone. If you're going with a jumbo fret that has a more rounded top, you're going to have a slightly different tone as you play the guitar than if you were to have a short, really narrow um, uh, fret wire that has a very narrow contact patch on it. But again, it's going to be very, very small. And because you've uh, installed the frets into the fretboard during construction, if after you finish building the guitar, you decide, wow, I, I don't like that tone. 
maybe I should change the fret wire. That's kind of silly when you can just simply change the pickups. So I don't think it really bears mentioning. And the same is true with the, the tuners. Their impact on tone is going to be very minimal. And really, I think where the impact on tone is, could potentially be noticeable is when you're trying to compare a really cheap quality tuner to a really high-end, expensive, well-made, uh, top-of-the-line tuner. So um, that's really the only difference. And I think that with the cheap, poor quality tuner, because of slop, you tend to lose some of the tone because they transfer the vibrations of the string into the wood at the headstock where it's no longer available to be detected by the pickup. But that's getting into some really complex physics there. But just know, if you really want to maintain a certain tone based on all the parts and materials that you've selected, you owe it to yourself to use a good quality tuner to maintain that. So, and then there's other little components like the strap buttons. Forget about those. They have no effect on tone. And I know there are going to be people out there who are going to argue that because they can. That's one of the disadvantages of the internet and social media is everybody wants to be thought of as a genius when it comes to this sort of thing. But no, the strap buttons aren't going to affect the tone. And neither are things like the, the string ferrules, um, the, some of the screws and things that are used to hold everything together. Um, now the bridge definitely could impact tone. Um, but again, that's one of those that's not well documented. We don't really, you know, we don't have a chart listing all the different kinds of bridges and what the kind of tone they produce. So it's kind of a crapshoot there. But I will say that in my opinion, the selection of the bridge plays a greater role in determining the sustain of the guitar than it does the tone of the guitar. It might have a little bit of effect on the tone, but I don't think it's worth incorporating into your uh, process of planning and predicting the outcome of the tone in the end. But knowing all this stuff, again, it's going to help you to plan and predict the, the, the tone of the guitar so that when you, you finish it and hand it over to the customer, it's exactly what they were hoping for. But if it isn't, if the tone doesn't quite meet their expectation, you can figure out from talking to the customer what went wrong. Or if you're building the guitar for yourself, you can ask yourself that question. Where, why isn't this sounding the way I want it? And because you understand how you selected all the parts and materials to build the guitar, you're going to be able to very quickly identify the elements that can be changed to help dial in that tone. And in almost all cases, that change is either going to be the pickup or pickups, or the capacitor on the, on the tone pot. You can make those changes and suddenly transform the instrument and make it exactly what you want. And unfortunately, if, if you're new to this, you may have to go through a couple of different pickups before you get the tone exactly the way you want it. And there's a good chance that you'll, you'll swap out pickups and still not quite be there. But in the back of your mind, you're going to say, but that's okay. I can adjust the EQ on my amplifier and it'll nail it. So I hope you find this video to be useful and, and thought provoking. And I hope that it will help you in your quest to build not only the perfect playable guitar, but a guitar that has exactly the tone that you're, you're going after. So uh, as always, um, be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Um, visit eGuitarPlans.com or my Highland Guitars merch store. There's links in the description below. And any purchase you make there is going to help support this channel because I don't offer memberships and I don't offer uh, Patreon. Um, and of course, if you want to keep it simple, you can just click the thanks button and leave a little tip in the amount that you think is fair. That's if you get something out of the video or any of my videos. And of course, until the next episode, as always, take care, stay safe, and I hope you'll be back for more future guitar building videos.